are you doing? It's time for classical mechanics. In the previous lesson, we introduced the tamped harmonic motion. We introduced the friction term depending linearly with velocity. This is a very general expression for damping for not too large velocities. Newton's second law wrote as mx2 dot equal to minus kx minus bx dot. And we found that the general solution to that was e to the minus beta times a times e to the omega prime t plus b times e to the negative omega prime t, where beta is b over 2m, omega prime is the square root of beta square minus omega naught squared, being omega naught the natural frequency of the oscillator, that is, without damping. And a and b are integration constants that can be found with the initial conditions. We saw there are three cases of damped motion. One for when omega square is negative, one for when omega square is positive, and one for when omega square t is zero. The first case was the underdamped harmonic motion. When we went back to the general solution, we found that omega prime was imaginary, so the exponents were imaginary. This led to a solution that was an oscillatory motion exponentially damped. Well, the angular frequency of those oscillations is smaller than the natural frequency omega naught. Let's study now the overdamped harmonic motion. When omega prime squared is positive, this implies that beta is greater than omega naught. Here we have that the damping term is more relevant than the in the previous case. If we go back to the general solution now, we see that omega prime squared positive. So the exponents are real. Let's write this down. Because now beta is greater than omega prime, both exponents are negative. So we have two decaying exponentials in the solution of the overdamped harmonic oscillator. Here beta can go from slightly larger than omega naught to much much larger than omega naught. If beta is just slightly larger than omega naught, then omega prime is almost zero. Both terms in the solution are almost equal, and we only have decaying exponential behavior from e to the minus beta. The spring is stretched and released, and it just goes to the equilibrium position following this exponential. There is no oscillatory motion in this case. If beta is much larger than omega naught, then omega prime is basically beta. This is a strong damping. The second term is much more negative than the first one. The second term ten then decays much faster than the first one, so the first one dominates. Let's rewrite the exponent of the first term, taking beta out of the square root and using the fact that beta is much larger than omega naught. We can approximate as So the exponential behavior goes as e to the negative omega naught square over 2 beta t. Because beta is much larger than omega naught, this is a slow decay. The spring slowly goes back to the origin. Now, what about the third case, when omega prime squared is zero? This means that beta is equal to omega naught. We can rewrite the differential equation as x2 dot plus 2 beta x dot plus beta square x equals to zero. Here we need to go and solve it again. The one solution we found is not valid here. In the procedure we followed to solve it, both solutions would be the same one. So the only solution would be e to the negative beta. Here the other solution to the second order differential equation is t times e to the negative beta. Let's quickly check that this is in fact solution of the differential equation.
So the most general solution is x of t equal to e to the minus beta t times a plus b t. Here the exponential term will win the linear term, and overall will go to zero for large t. This is called critical damping. This is the case when the system goes to zero the quickest. So, if you want to design a system that does this quickly, you need to tune it so that beta is equal to omega naught. If you look at the three cases and the solutions, in the underdamped case, beta is smaller than omega naught. The exponent of the underdamped oscillator is beta, which in that case is smaller than omega naught. So, it goes slower. In the overdamped case, beta is larger than omega naught. The dominant term exponent is beta minus omega prime, which is smaller than omega naught. So it also goes slower. Critical damping goes quickly to zero, and it does so without crossing zero. These three cases are of great importance in nature, and engineering also. And we found an analytical solution, good for us. But also important is adding some modulation to the oscillator. That will be in the next lesson. May the science be with you. Mm -hmm.